you tonight about getting booking at your show. And I want you to kind of picture for a minute, it's actually a two-step process. And I think that most of us are pretty good at trying the first step, but we sometimes miss the second step. So I just want to tell you, the first step is really getting guests excited about and picturing themselves actually hosting a show. So they've emotionally decided to do this. Um, the reasons why they get excited to book shows, we always talk about the four Fs. It's about the food, it's about the fun, friends, and free. And you've heard this before. We usually focus on the free, but if we're forgetting the food and the fun and the friends, we're leaving several bookings unbooked every show. Um, when you go to a home party, why do you go to a home party? I go to have fun. Last night we asked this question of training, one girl's like, this is a treat! You know, <laughs> there's all kinds of reasons people go to parties and why people host parties. A lot of it has to do with the social side of it. So as you're sitting in a crowd and you decide to book a show emotionally, you actually haven't booked it until you actually pick the date. And so what we're really good at, I think, is getting the emotional decision. But getting that second step to pick a date is actually a missing link sometimes for us. So we're going to talk tonight about how we get to that second step. And so um, we, of course, are advertising the fun, the food, the friends, and the free before, during, and after our demo. We help them picture themselves by hosting because we use assuming language. We, think, we say things like, when you host, not if. And we also say you as often as we can. We don't say like, oh, host likes you. We say you will like. So you're using assuming language, when, you, etc. cetera. Um, just as a little side note, when you have reluctant hosts, remember to paint that picture of co-hosting. I had a show I closed today, and my host was really sweet. She said, can I just tell you real quick, you should tell all of your friends and people at your shows, the only reason I did this show is because I did it with my friend. Co-hosting was the only reason I booked. And so she, she was really cute, and she was just like, so if you don't tell people about it at your shows, you're probably missing some booking. It took all the pressure off of me to know I wasn't going to be the only one inviting guests. So that is a little side note to make sure that you do advertise that when you're talking about bookings and helping them picture themselves. You and your friend can do it together, so make sure. And I said to her, did it bother you that you split the rewards at the end? And she said, no, I didn't book a show because I wanted free products. I booked a show because I wanted to have friends over and wanted to have fun. So for sure it was not for her about that. So it's just a good reminder to us that it isn't just about free and they do enjoy having a friend do it with them. Remember, we also offer some specialty show types that you need to picture, let people picture themselves doing. Having a trigger product to talk about fundraisers. So when I talk about anything, when I do a lava cake, I always make sure that the frosting gets scooped in with one of our stainless scoops. Not because I can't use a bamboo spoon, but because I want to talk about cookie dough. And my trigger is I say, if you're sick of cookie dough fundraisers, you and I need to talk. We can do a fundraiser with Pampered Chef. Every show I get to advertise fundraisers because I touch this cookie scoop and I've trained my brain to bring up a fundraiser. Every recipe gets salt and pepper in it because I pull out my grinder set and say, this is an ideal wedding gift. If you know anyone getting married, you're going to do them a huge favor when you book a bridal shower with me today. I'm going to bring an apron for the bride and I'll go into great descriptions of that. Again, we're just planting all those seeds so people see it. They picture themselves hosting that party. Okay, so we're still in step one, but I wanted to make sure you knew about that. Um, second step is our critical step. Now we need to create urgency. Often I hear people say like, oh, they said they wanted to have a show, but I just can't get them to pick a date. We need to create urgency. So how we do that, we advertise specific dates. This is not a new idea. I take this to every show, and I'm going to recommend you take to every show, whatever month you're booking. That flyer needs to be in a frame with your two or three, maybe four dates that you're trying to book. This should be advertising. You are not going to put November in here yet if you still have some key dates you need to fill. If you only have one or two and you're okay with October, then flip November. But our biggest mistake is when we talk about too far away bookings when we still have current that need to take place. So you've created a little urgency by specific dates you're sharing. Okay? You're also going to create urgency when you cre uh, talk about specific recipes. When I say next month is wine, cheese, and chocolate shows, they're not going to say, maybe we'll have a January show. When I got really excited about wine, cheese, and chocolate, guess what? That's not on the menu in January. Wine, cheese, and chocolate is November. And so we're creating that urgency. So it's going to be specific dates, specific themes. And when you say things like, oh, next month I'm making. We said wine, cheese, and chocolate. Remember, that was advertising a theme. But when I say next month, I'm going to teach you how to make s'mores cake 
in the log in the new rock crop, I'm now showing you a specific recipe. So do you see that second step is all about being specific? and create an urgency. Here's another way to advertise. Um, maybe when you're trying to get a specific you know, date booked on the calendar at the show, you run a special promotion. And this is my little brownie pan that I just put a few little dates. I included catalog shows. I showed this on our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. But what you need to know when you offer something bigger than what Pamper Chef is just going to give as their normal, there is absolutely requirements that you as the consultant are entitled and you will require someone to do. So if you're at my show tonight and I say, now I know your wish list is really big. I know many of you are thinking about hosting a show. Do you hear my assuming language? Mm -hmm. Many of you are thinking about hosting a show and I want to make sure Jacob gets credit for your party. So we need to pencil in a date tonight. These are a few of my next dates. When you take one of these dates tonight, you're actually going to get this brownie pan. Not this one, you'll get a new one in plastic. But you'll get a brownie pan at your own party. So you remember, we need to talk, these dates are a first come, first serve, but when you take one of these dates tonight, I'll be able to give you a brownie pan when you have your party next month, okay? I don't let you pick it anytime you want. I don't let you book it tomorrow. It's when you pencil your date tonight. So do you hear how specific that is and what I'm asking them? Another option that's a very specific kind of a teaser, remember the brownie pan is $19. You're adding this to the host order when they hold the show. They had at least $150. I'm assuming it's about $1,000 here, but we're just going to say it's 20% off as their host benefit. So now this $19 pan costs me about $17. Then you're going to make at least 20% commission. There's another $2 or $3 off. This brownie pan is going to cost you about $13 or $14. If there was a store on the corner selling bookings, would you go buy one for $14? Absolutely. Every day of the week. You can buy your booking right here. Are you going to do this every month? No, but if you tell yourself, November, I'm going all out because I know that what I do now affects me 90 days from now, I'm going to buy bookings for $14 every day of the week. So that's an option. Here's another one. These are called booking bees. And these are really fun. So if you were to arrive at my show, I would be like, hi, Robin, my name is Julie. So great to meet you, Robin. I have a little bit of bling for you. And I would just walk around the room and start passing out these necklaces. I'm not going to tell you anything about it. I'm, I don't know if I can even get it untangled. We're going to pretend I hand you one. And I'm going to put it in all of your laps. It's not time to explain. I will say, now I know this is not a jewelry party, but at my parties I like to have a little bling too. And at the end you're going to find out what these are all about. We're going to do the show. I'm going to do my three ways to get our products. And then when I get to the booking section, I'm going to say, oh, now I get to tell you why you've been wearing this beautiful bling today. Do you see the picture of the product that's on your bead? It's actually going to be a gift for you when you decide to host a show. And not only for you, but for Jacob, since you're booking at his party, he's going to get it at your party too. So if Jacob reads down your neck about booking, I'm really sorry. Totally not my fault, but you know, it just is kind of exciting for you and for our host Jacob today. Now what we're going to do is when you look at your bead and you see this, maybe you already have that product, or maybe you see Dawn or Susan's and you want it, it doesn't matter to me if you want to trade. But remember, when you come and check out with me tonight and you bring me your order, whatever picture is on your bead, that's going to be your gift at that party. Okay, so right now, when we're all done, you guys can start trading necklaces, you can do whatever, but when we schedule your party tonight, at your next party, when you actually hold that, you're going to get it, and so is Jacob. So anyway, that's how I would handle the booking beads. Now these are beautiful booking beads that another consultant made, but you know you can get these beads at any party store. They're really inexpensive. Usually they're like three for 99 cents. You don't have to do anything super cute. Um, mine were not very cute, but they still worked. I still got bookings. Um, you can do anything you want with it. You choose the size of the product that you want to give away. Remember, it's going to go on the host order. It's going to be at 20%. You're going to make 20%. Again, would you buy a booking for $13, $14? Some people said, no, I'd rather just do a $10 item than do a $10 item. My philosophy is go big or stay home. I'm just going to say, if I'm going to hang a necklace around your neck, I'm going to give you something that's more than $10. I'm going to give you something in the $14 to $18 range, the value of it. Okay, so those are ways to get specific. Your wording at checkout is really important, and I'm assuming, and when you're new, you might not know, but we'll just review, make sure you know that you're asking for a booking at every checkout with every person. And if I say to you, you know, hey, Robin, were you thinking about having a party? I don't know, maybe. What do we do with the maybe? We are in charge, so we come right back with, oh, now maybe, tell me, is that maybe because you're not sure how our host plan works, 
Or is it maybe because you don't know when? What do you think Robin's going to say to me? <laughs> I don't know when. I go, well, actually, let me tell you my next opening. And I just go right into when my next opening is. I will tell you that works, but don't let yourself get tongue-tied when someone says to you, I don't know, maybe. And you go, okay, well, when you decide, call me. Okay, yeah, oh, yeah, right maybe right here. Let me look at my calendar. You pull up your phone calendar and let's figure out a date right now. See there? <laughs> That's what you're doing. Or when someone says, I have to check my calendar. I don't know till I check my calendar. And you say, I totally get it. I live by my calendar, too. Um, why don't I just tell you my next date so when you get home you can look at your calendar so you at least know what I have open. I will read them. I go, if you, when you're going to book, are you looking for a weekday or a weekend? And she's going to say, has to be the weekend. Here's my next two weekends, the 14th or the 21st. You know, if you want, we could actually pencil you in for one of them because these go really quick. And she's going to go, all right, pencil me in. And I'll go, tomorrow text me if the date doesn't work. If not, you're on for the 14th. Boom. That may be, let me check my calendar, is now on my calendar. And then I'm giving you a host packet before you go, and we're committed, ready to go. So we need to do all that we can to create the desire, help people picture themselves hosting shows, but we can't stop at that and say, okay, I'll call you. Okay, I'll email you. It's very frustrating. So please make sure you work on step two, create urgency by advertising dates advertising fees, advertising recipes, and if you choose to, on occasion, you can give away something specific with the requirements that they need. Okay? Anybody have any questions about that second step and making sure that you create, getting a date on the calendar mm -hmm. is going to save you all kinds of heartache. You give a host packet at the time, you do everything. And I think I'm late. So uh, <laughs> I think we're done. It's 8.25.